Hi there everyone, welcome back to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials and in this lecture we are going to have a look at the final of 2018 paper 1 question 3.2 in the previous lesson we looked at creating the class in 3.1 so now in 3.2 we're moving over to the main form and in this question it's telling me that the user is entering some data and that I need to display the output in the rich edit so at the bottom here on the next page you will see write code to do the following use the data that has been entered to instantiate the object so instantiating the object means that I need to call my constructor create and then I will use the two string method the one that they created for me to display these details in the rich edit so first what I need to do is I need to store the values from the objects on the form so I'm getting the name and the year that they entered and from the spin edit I'm getting the number of employees remember that the spin edit has a dot value property and this value property is an integer so I don't need string to int to convert it to an integer variable the next part is now instantiating the object our aim is to get a line of code that looks like this so here's a little trick on how to create this line of code if you go to the top where they have declared the object for you you will copy out the declaration paste it after the input from the user was stored and change that colon sign so that it is now an assignment statement by adding an equal sign after now your type t restaurant i add dot create and in round brackets if i open my round brackets i'm now going to have hints to indicate to me which, what parameters it needs to receive. Now, it's important when we call any method from your class that you match it in NOD. Number, how many parameters are there? There's one, two, three. Order, first the name, then the year, then the number of employees. And then lastly, in data type. In my constructor, I created parameters of string data type for both the name and the year and then the number of employees needs to be an integer so once I've added my local variables my code looks like this where I'm sending it the name of the restaurant the year and the number of employees and that is called instantiating the object the next part of the question asked us to display the fields of this object using the two string so a two string is a string data type and it is used to display the fields of the class in my main form because two string is a function it will always be part of another statement like for example in a rich edit so a two string is used to display so often objects like labels or show messages are used to display this two string this line here instantiating the object was the last time that I would use the type T restaurant from now on I will only use the object dot and then the method so in my rich edit I am placing my two string so that when I run my code I will have the output of the two string let's go to the next question question 3.2.2 and here I'm asked to call the compile code method now if you remember in our previous lesson we created a function called compile code that created an identification code for the person and then I need to display this code in edit id code the edit box so in here very simple I'm getting input from the user from the edit box for the owner's name compile code needed one parameter so I'm sending it one argument the name of the owner to create this code compile code is a function so therefore it needs to be part of another statement and in this case we are displaying it in the edit box so it's part of another statement so quite a simple question so now we can have a look at question 3.2.3 
and I suggest that you always have a look at what code has been given and this IMAX employees has been given as a constant. So let's have a look at the question. The question says you need to extract the number of employees from the edit box, that means store it in an integer variable, and then we need to determine if this number, if I add this number to the existing number of employees, um, it may not exceed the maximum number. So this maximum number is the number stored in my constant. And then they continue to say that if the number of employees can be added, so it was less or equal to the maximum number, um, I need to call the relevant method to increase the number of employees. That was my mutator method, the procedure that added the number of employees to the existing number of employees. And then I will display the total number of employees in my edit box again. So here we go, input from the user, and then I'm going to use get num employees. That's the existing number of employees. And I need to test that if I you take the existing number of employees and I add what employees they wanted to add, that it does not exceed my constant declared IMAX employees. If it does, then I will display exceed maximum in the edit box as the question was asking. Else I will call my procedure increase number of employees and I will add this number to the existing number of employees. Remember the increase number of employees was a procedure so therefore it does not form part of another statement but it stands on its own. It needed a number um, as a parameter, so I'm sending it inum the argument. And then we needed to show the updated number of employees. So get number of employees is my accessor method that will return the number of employees. Get number of employees was a function, so it forms part of another statement. The result data type of get number of employees was integer, so in order to display it in the string, the dot text property of the edit box, I need to into string this function. Now you are ready to run your code and see if it works. Now you can run your program and they have supplied us with some input. I will click on instantiate and display the object and I have the output of the to string here. And then in question 3.2.2, um, the input example was Peter van Wyk, and if I click on identification code, I should get the same output as in the question paper SYK 2018. Then in the last question, if I add four employees, my updated number of employees must be 29. That matches my question paper, so that is correct. The next example of output said, if we use this number of employees, so I'm instantiating this object again, and I now add 20 employees, 20 plus 25 is going to give me 45, and I click on add employees, it should say exceeds maximum. I now know that my program is working correctly. What is important when you're testing your program is that you always instantiate the object first. If you don't, so let's say for example I want to test identification code. I've tested instantiate and display the object before and now I've written the code for 3.2.2 and I just want to test if identification code works. If I click on it now, my program gives me an error. It says an access violation. It's trying to access the object, but the object does not yet exist in the memory of the computer. So it's important to always click on the button that contains the constructor where you're instantiating the object first before you try to click on other buttons that make use of any other methods of your class. Hope this helps. See you soon.